What happened to Prince of Persia, guys? A franchise that spans all the way back to 1989, and all of a sudden, it seems like we really don't get very many, you know, much word about a continuation of this franchise. So what I want to talk about in this segment of the show is kind of what happened to Prince of Persia. Uh, the last, the latest release we got, guys, was Prince of Persia Escape, which came out September 27th of 2018 on iOS and Android, so a mobile game. But we haven't seen a continuation of this franchise, so let's talk about what happened. We can kind of speculate and talk about what we think might have happened, and will we ever see a return to this franchise? So let's talk about it. So guys, like I said, this is a franchise that spans back to 1989 with Prince of Persia, and based on the timeline, guys, we have had a, a number of these games have come out, and really, in my personal opinion, some great games to say the least. I would say that the the biggest, I would say the the time of which we can say that this was a, a series at its peak and at its prime was between 2003 and 2005 when you had, of course, the Sands of Time, Warrior Within, the Two Thrones, and Battles of Prince of Persia. And there were other games, of course, in the, in the series that were really good, but I feel like that stretch of time was the strongest point, at least in my opinion, for this franchise. At least those were the times when I was, I was playing these games pretty religiously, and I thought that they were absolutely incredible. And, you know, of course, there were other games that were good, The Forgotten Sands, there were other decent entries into the franchise, but I just thought, guys, that really, th at that point in time, between 2003 and 2005, I really would love to go back to those days and have some continuation of some of those titles because I thought that they were just very well made and a lot of fun to say the least. So here was the thing though. You had between 2003 and 2005, you had all of these, you know, additions to the franchise and you had a couple years off. You had Prince of Persia Classic, Prince of Persia in 2008 and The Fallen King. Forgotten Sands came out in 2010 a couple years later and then three years later The Shadow and The Flame, which was a remake. And then a number of years later until we got Prince of Persia Escape in 2018, which of course, guys, was the iOS and Android version of Prince of Persia. So there were a number of spin-offs, there were a number of mobile games. Now, as far as the future is concerned, guys, in 2012, leaked images from a project entitled Osiris were widely assumed to be the next Prince of Persia title. Jordan Mechner even commented on his Twitter account that the images were not from a Prince of Persia game. A year later, in 2013, Yanis Mallet, CEO of Ubisoft Montreal, said that the franchise was being paused, saying that as soon as we have something to show, we will. In the following months, Ubisoft confirmed that they were either planning or considering next-gen entries in multiple franchises, including Prince of Persia. Look, guys, this is another franchise that had, of course, a movie that was made out of it, um, and it didn't do very well whatsoever, but... This is another franchise that is gotten kind of an expanded franchise, expanded like universe. This kind of spans multiple different platforms, that being like video games and movies, entertainment. And ultimately, guys, the question is, is kind of, you know, what really happened here? And in an article, guys, that was written by Katrina Philippus of, uh, of Game Ranks, when you rewind the sands of time back to 2010, the swashbuckling Prince of Persia series was still in full swing. Since its 1989 debut, Jordan Mechner's brainchild has brought upon the gaming industry a lasting impact which most notably manifested in the Tomb Raider and Assassin's Creed franchises. But the worlds of Persia, Italy, France, and Egypt are still different. Instead of an animus, our prince deals with magical daggers, combat mechanics, override stealth, and there are no haystacks in sight. So in 2017, why, why has the popularity of one of the most influential action-adventure games waned? So almost five years ago, Ubisoft said the Prince of Persia franchise would be put on hold until the right time. All our franchises are always in gestation. They're cooking. Some are cooking longer than others, but they're cooking, uh, cooking were the precise words of Ubisoft Europe's uh, Elaine Core. 
However, you look at this, guys, you know, we haven't really had much of, like, the main entries in the franchise since 2013, guys, with The Shadow and The Flame, which was a remake back in 2013. So, believe it or not, the first title in the Assassin's Creed chain was intended to be a Prince of Persia game. Instead of thwarting Jafar's minions, the player would become the prince's guardian. And then the, the Warrior Within Sails Plateau. Compared to the massively successful The Sands of Time, 2004's Warrior Within only managed to cough up 800,000 copies copies a grave diagnosis for the future of the series. Fortunately, the Two Thrones and 2008 entry Prince of Persia turned things around, but it wouldn't be enough. And so that's where I think is step, kind of the first thing, guys, is what happened with this franchise was just some sales. The sales of some of these games, even though I loved The Warrior Within, I loved The Two Thrones, I thought that they were very well, those were really well put together games, but they just didn't sell as well as some of their other franchises and even other games within the within the series itself. To Ubisoft's surprise, the story of Desmond Miles resonated with gamers so strongly it translated in astronomically high sales figures, stagnating around 2.2 million copies. The reimagined 3D Prince of Persia couldn't keep up with the behemoth that was Assassin's Creed, which reached 10 million. So look, guys, when you look at Prince of Persia, it's not selling. I mean, you're looking 800,000, you know, copies for Warrior Within. Let's say Prince of Persia made, you know, uh, the Two Thrones and, and Prince of Persia got like a million copies each. 10 million for Assassin's Creed is, I mean, that's, that, that's so huge. That's such a huge difference. Why wouldn't you adjust and make, put all of your resources into a game like Assassin's Creed, which is what they did, which basically, in my opinion, was what ruined Assassin's Creed, essentially, uh, for a period of time, was just kind of oversaturating that game uh, in particular. But, Seeing the success of the original Assassin's Creed game, good old Ubi started pumping out new Assassin's Creed titles every year. Similar to Call of Duty, as a whole, the franchise has surpassed 100 million copies and units sold. The Prince of Persia profits simply weren't in the same league. So what does all this mean for Prince of Persia fans? Is the series dead? Call me overly optimistic, but I think a good franchise can never really die. Whether it is in fact a new game in development is still unknown. However, if Ubisoft plans to revive Prince of Persia, it's going to need fresh ingredients and a new oven. Only then can it be baked to perfection. So, at the end of the day, guys, there was a couple of things here that I think really hurt Prince of Persia. Number one was, even though The Warrior Within, Two Thrones, I thought that those were great games, Warrior Within didn't sell as well. And so that kind of hurts, right? The reception of some of these wasn't as good either as, as some of the others. And then Assassin's Creed comes out and it's like this juggernaut of a franchise. And Ubisoft takes that and they're like, this is our Call of Duty. So we're just going to pump these out every single year, essentially. And we're going to just generate a ton of revenue from that. So they'll probably take a bunch of the teams from Prince of Persia, put them on Assassin's Creed. And there you have it. You've got other franchises like The Division, Watch Dogs, that Ubisoft is kind of utilizing because they're making a lot of money right now. Not saying that Prince of Persia is something that'll never come back, but it's right now probably an afterthought. Something that Ubisoft probably isn't really thinking about going back to as of yet. But here's the thing, guys. If you're a big Prince of Persia fan, you just have to voice your opinion to the developers. You build a move, we build movements around these things, guys, where, you know, if there's enough people that want something made, Ubisoft or whoever the developer is may very well see that and think to themselves, you know what, it might be time to go back to Prince of Persia especially something not like Android and iOS. But here's the positive thing, is that they're still thinking about Prince of Persia because they're bringing out games. Even though it's an iOS and Android-based game, a mobile device game, we're still getting Prince of Persia. So that tells you something, that they haven't moved on from Prince of Persia completely. It's up to the community to say, hey, we want another Prince of Persia main entry in the franchise at some point in the foreseeable future. But let me know what you guys think. Do you guys want to see a continuation of Prince of Persia? What do you think happened to the franchise? Let me know what you guys think. And for more Prince of Persia content and videos, stay here with Zero TV.